So today we are going to cover lab number 10. Design of a digital to analog converter that will be covered in first part of the lab. And on the second part of the lab we will cover analog to digital converter. This lab describes the design of a digital to analog converter. In short we call DAC. Two types of designs are shown in this lab. Binary weighted DAC and R2 or ladder DAC design. Finally, a student will uh, compare both the design to conclude which design is sufficient and why. This is the theory and methodology behind the lab. One common requirement in electronics is to convert signals back and forth between analog and digital forms. Most such conversions are ultimately based on a digital to analog converter circuit. Therefore, it is worth exploring just how we can convert a digital number that represents a voltage value into an actual analog voltage. In electronics, a digital to analog converter, sometimes called DAC or DA or D2A or D2A, okay, is a function that converts digital data that's usually in binary into an analog signal. That can be current voltage or electric charge. An analog to digital converter, ADC, performs the reverse function. Unlike analog signals, digital data can be transmitted, manipulated, and stored without degradation, albeit with more complex equipment. But a DAC is needed to convert the digital signal to analog, for example, to drive an airphone or loudspeaker amplifier and produce sound that is analog air pressure waves okay that's the sound if you look at the picture at the bottom that's the pictorial representation of the entire process you see this is the sound waves you are producing to the microphone okay it's taking the analog signal this is the analog signal that is coming to the adc analog digital converter now your signal has gone digitized so you can process different uh, have our apply different processing on the digital value. Look at over here. Digital processing, it can be effects, some special effect you can do, filtering you can do, some conversion you can do, etc. Okay. So after the processing on the digital value with the computer, then uh, you need to use digital to analog converter to convert this digital value to back to analog signal. And from the speaker, we can hear. So the signals we, we find around ourselves are all analog in nature. Okay, when you want to transmit the analog signal through the computer uh, uh, telecommunication system, that signal must be converted to digital value. Okay, in terms of GR1. So that we can process the signals by using the computer algorithm or programming. After the processing, we need to convert those digital signals back to the analog form so that we can hear. So at the beginning of the system, we use ADC. Analog to digital converter, after the processing, we we'll use DAC, digital to analog converter, to get the signal in the analog form, to be useful to us, for us, okay? So, what is DAC? A digital to analog converter converts a digital signal to an analog voltage or kernel, okay? Suppose this is the digital value, by using the DAC, you can convert this value to an analog signal. <coughs> so, look at over here. This is the digital input signal. Okay, this one a value, this one another value, this one another value, this one another value. So this is a different digital input signal. And finally, if we just connect different dots, we get a continuous shape. That's our analog output. Analog is continuous. Digital is discrete. Okay. So this is the way we can do. Okay. We give the digital signal. Finally, we take analog output. How we take the analog output? There are different algorithms. So many types of DACs are available, usually switches, resistors, and op-amps used to implement conversion. There are two main types of DAC. One is called binary weighted resistor, other is called R2 or ladder. So what is binary weighted resistor? It utilizes a summing op-amp circuit, operational and preferred circuit. Okay. Weighted resistors are used to distinguish each bit from the most significant bit to the least significant bit. 
transistors are used to switch between reference voltage and the ground okay bit high or low look at over here this is the different bits we apply over here this is the reference voltage and this is the of a summing of a circuit so i uh, assume ideal of them no current to the of them okay at the beginning virtual ground at inverting input okay virtual ground at the inverting input v out equal to this is the formula v out equal to minus i r okay minus i r that's the formula of of them voltages v1 through vn are either the reference if corresponding bit is high or ground if corresponding bit is low look at over here this voltage v1 through vn either they can be either the reference voltage by in the switch or they can be ground so they may have only two values either the reference voltage or the ground okay v1 is the most significant bit v1 is the most significant bit and vn is the least significant bit so if you have a bit position uh, like uh, like uh, 1001 okay so one will come over here 0 0 then one that means one means you will connect to vf first zero means you will connect to the ground okay zero means you will connect to the ground so in this case in the picture this 1 0 0 1 okay so you are giving 1 0 0 1 and the output will get the analog output okay so this v reference is very important okay the output that you get in terms of v reference so this is the equation for it okay v out equal to minus i r f minus r f and this is the summation of current okay look at the rest of the value r 2 to the 0 twice r 2 to the 1 2 to the 2 is 4 so 2 and minus 1 that's why it is called binary weighted resistor. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, last one 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so that's why it is called binary weighted resistor. This is the most significant bit, this is the least significant bit. So if RF is equal to R divided by 2, back uh, I think uh, feedback uh, resistor RF is r divided by 2 then v out equal to this is the equation of v out for example a 4 bit converter gets v out equal to minus v reference and this is the bit value bit 0 bit 1 bit 2 bit 3 okay. there these bits either just 0 or 1 so you can easily calculate what is the output voltage now what are the advantages of binary rotate resistor advantage simple construction or analysis first conversion what is the disadvantage requires large range of resistors 2000 is to 1 for 12 bit duct with necessary high precision for low resistors okay so what is you need you need large value resistor plus high precision for the lower value resistor okay that's very important otherwise you will not get the accurate result. Requires low switch resistance in transistors. Can be expensive, therefore, usually limited to 8 bit resolution. So, up to 8 bit, you can use over here for accuracy. If you go above 8 bits, then uh, it cannot guarantee the accuracy. Okay, therefore, usually limited to 8 bit resolution. Now, the second uh, option to implement uh, this uh, duct is the R2 ladder. This R2 ladder is very popular because of simplicity and accuracy. Look at over here. Each bit corresponds to a switch. Okay, each bit. This is the bit. Okay, this bit corresponds to a switch. If a bit is high, the corresponding switch is connected to the inverting or input of the op amp. If the bit is high, look at over here. If the bit is high, then the switch come over here and is connected to the inverting input of the open. If the bit is low, the corresponding switch is connected to the ground. If the bit is low, the corresponding switch is connected to the ground. Look at over here. Here, 4 bit. 
all zero. So all fruit switches are connected to the ground. Okay, if it is one zero zero one, then this switch will be connected over here to the inverting input of the oven. And one, one uh, another uh, advantage of this actuator is only two bell of resistor is used. If this is one ohm, oh, this is two ohm. If this is one kilo ohm, this is two kilo ohm. Okay, so that's very convenient. So if you do the simplification. First, simplify this portion with this uh, diagram. You get this equivalent resistor. Then you just extend your circuit. Simplify this portion. And likewise, if you follow, V out equal to minus I R. Okay. So V three. If you just do the calculation, this is the V three. V two, V one, V reference. V three is one by eight V reference in this case. This is V2 1 by 4 V reference V1 equal to 1 by 2 V reference. Okay. So finally, if you calculate the formula V out, this becomes like this. Where B3 corresponds to B3, B2 corresponds to B2, etc. Okay. B3, B2, B1, and B0. So this is the uh, first bit, second bit, third bit, and fourth bit. If bit n is set. B n equal to one. If B n with n is clear, B n equal to zero. Set means if you get the term set, set a bit. Okay means set to one. If you get the term clear, clear the bit means it becomes zero. So this is the formula of four bit outward lattice network. B out equal to this formula. For a for general n bit outward lattice or Binary type resistor that you can use this formula. What is the advantage of actual ladder? Only two resistor values are required, R and 12. Does not require high precision resistor. There are some many advantages. What is the disadvantage? Lower conversion speed than binary type. Okay, so it is it will be slow compared to binary type, but Because of simple design, okay, and uh, accuracy, this actual data is widely used. Application of the uh, digital analog converter. This is the in mod digital motor control. You can use computer printer, sound equipment, electronic voice control, digital thermistor. So it has lots of application. Uh, this is a pre-lab work. There are two questions for you for the pre-lab homework. Why DAX has been an integral part of of electronics or for decades? Okay. Second question: How are DAX and ADC vastly used? These are apparatus for your lab. IC cell for one OPM one one piece of OPM circuit. IC resistors are required. Usually fourteen pieces are required, and also less. Precaution that you need to make in the physical laboratory: never turn on the DC source before the circuit is placed correctly and checked carefully. Check for short circuits in the screw circuit. Okay. And this experimental procedure: first set up the binary voltage digital to analog converter as shown in Figure One in that on the trainer board. This is the Figure One. Okay, as shown in this figure, you set up the circuit on the trainer board. Step one. Step two. Put the following sequence: one zero one zero to okay, one zero one zero to D zero, D one, D two, and D three. Respectively, see the output of the oscilloscope. Again, set up the output ladder on the trainer board. We will then step two for the output ladder. Okay, that's the experimental procedure. Simulation and result. Draw a plot of the Draw a plot on graph paper showing relationship between digital input and analog output of digital to analog converter. Calculate resolution and percentage resolution of each converter. Use multisim live for software simulation. So this is the simulation in multisim live, four-bit binary rotated resistor circuit. 
is the list R1, R2, R3, and R4. All, all switches are closed. Okay. So that means all switches are closed means we are applying all bits. This is all for one. It's all for one. This is one, 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 one. This switch is closed. Okay. And we are getting the output. Nine point three. Okay. Uh, that's the output we are getting. And this is the circuit to simulate in the multisystem life for the actual duct circuit. Okay. If the switch is grounded, then it is zero. If the switch is not grounded, then it is the below. There one or zero depending on your setup okay this is zero it is down it is zero otherwise it is one okay so this is the circuit that we can use to simulate in multi-sim live let me quickly show the simulation so first we see the flash okay 4 bit binary rotated resistor circuit. So look at over here. Let's run the simulation. Switch is closed. That means we are applying the bit one over here. Switch open one means we are applying a zero. Oh, switch is open. Okay, all zero. Output is almost close to zero. One zero zero zero. We are getting five point seven point five eight point seven. So this is the binary voted digital to analog converter. This is the value we are giving and corresponding analog output we are getting here. The second one we are going to see R2 or ladder digital to analog converter. Let's run the simulation. Okay, all are high. We are getting 4.684, close to 5 volt. Now, if we just make anyone low, and accidentally you get analog out. Okay. So output will be according to the input. Okay, so this is the digital to analog converter. This converting the digital blue to analog signal in terms of voltage. So this output ladder that let me stop the simulation. 
let uh, go to my circuits. Now let's go back to our presentation. Questions for report writing. Why R2 or ladder digital to analog converter is preferable than binary weighted digital to analog converter? That's the question for your report. Discussion and conclusion. Interpret the data findings and determine the extent to which the experiment was successful in complying with the goal that was initially set. Discuss any mistake you might have made while conducting the investigation and describe ways the study could have been improved. Yeah. The next part of our lab is the part 2, design of a flash analog to digital converter. This flash converter is very popular and very fast in operation. Flash analog to digital converters, also known as parallel ADCs, are the fastest way to convert an analog signal to a digital signal. Flash ADCs are ideal for applications requiring a very large bandwidth. But they consume more power than other ADC architectures and are generally limited to 8 bit resolution. Okay, so they are limited to 8 bit resolution. This tutorial will discuss flash converters and compare them with other converter types. In this experiment, students will learn how, to, how the flash ADC works by implementing a 2 bit flash ADC. So this is the theory and methodology. Flash ADC, it is a series of comparators. Each one compares input to a unique reference voltage. Look at over here, a series of comparators. And this is the reference voltage they are comparing. Means the voltage input. Same input to all the comparators. But reference voltage, that means the voltage on the positive and of the flip flop varies depending on the rest or location. So it is a series of comparators. Each one compares input to a unit reference voltage. Computer outputs connect to a priority encoder circuit produces binary output. So this is the priority encoder circuit. So it detects the highest flat output and convert it to a binary value. So flash analog to digital converter, fast but more expensive. Single circuit uses many computers in parallel with different reference voltages. Okay. Twice and minus one computers for n bits. So if you have n number of bits, then you need to use two for n minus one comparator for your design. Okay. So two to the n minus one computers for n bits. Each reference voltage equivalent to a quantization level. Encoding logic produces the work. Okay. If you look at the picture, this is more detailed. So being connected with two to the n computers in parallel. This is the input voltage. It is connected to the to the n minus one to the n computer in parallel. Okay. If this is a uh, three bit, then eight comparator. Two bit, there will be four comparator. So two to the n comparator in parallel, and two n is connected to the negative input of the optum. Computers connected to resistor string. This computers are connected to the resistor. String. Same rest to rest value of rest to for all the segment. Thermometer codes are by two resistors on bottom and top. This top resistor and this bottom resistor, they are by two. Okay. R divided by two resistor on bottom and top. Okay. Top R2 divided by two resistor on the bottom of R2 by two. 
for 0.5 LSB offset. Okay. Half flash law. As the analog input voltage exceeds the reference voltage at each comparator, the computer output should be sequentially saturated to a high value or high state. Okay. So as the analog input voltage exceeds the reference voltage. If this uh, voltage being exceed the reference voltage, then we get a higher output. Okay? On any comparator, if your input voltage exceed the reference voltage, corresponding of the output becomes high. Okay? And there can be many high as you go down, but only the High that appears at the first time that will be selected. That's why it is called priority encoder. As the analog input voltage exceeds the reference voltage at each comparator, the comparator output will sequentially saturate to a high state. The priority encoder generates a binary number based on the highest order active input, ignoring all other active inputs. So this is the advantage of flash. Simplest in terms of operation theory. Most efficient in terms of speed, very fast. But limited only in terms of comparator and gate propagation delays. And this is the disadvantage, lower resolution. Expensive. For each additional output bit, the number of computers is doubled. For example, for 8 bit, 256 computers are needed. A single circuit, okay? So that's why we are usually limited to 8 bit resolution. Okay, for the flash converter. So this is the implementation of 2 bit flash and not residual converter. The circuit is the simplest to understand. It is constructed from a series of comparators, each one comparing the input signal to a unique reference voltage. The comparator outputs connect to the inputs of a priority encoder circuit. So this is the priority encoder circuit, which then produces a binary output. The following illustration shown in figure 2. Okay, this in this figure we have using 2 bit ADC. That means for 2 bit, okay. For 2 bit, I think uh, we need to consider 2 to the n. Minus one of them. So three of them we are using over here. This is the input voltage that we are going to convert to analog binary. Okay, that is we are going to convert to binary, analog to binary, and this is the reference voltage. So this is the simulation in multi sim line. So let's go back to multi sim line. Two bit flash type ADC. Okay. So this coming line. Okay. Look at over here. For 2 bit, we need to use 2 to n minus 1 comparator. So 4 minus 1 is 3 comparator over here. Uh, the voltage that we are going to convert is connected to the positive terminal of the of a input voltage that we are going to convert. And this is the reference voltage 5 volt. Okay. Reference voltage is 5 volt. And with the resistor bank, they are connected to the Inverting input of the amplifier of them, okay. And this is the register same value R4, R3, R1, R2, R3. They have the same value, okay. All are one key. So let's run the simulation.
Five volt is a reference. So let's apply the voltage. See, this only two bits, so resolution is four. Okay, look at over here. It is. Uh, look at over here. When the voltage becomes uh, one point two volt, or uh, when it goes more than one point two, that is uh, at one point two five volt, we are getting the output. So it has a uh, four resolution of two bit. If you use eight bit, then uh, the resolution will be. Higher, okay. The more bits you use, the more better resolution you get. So in this case, we see that uh, when uh, input voltage is 1.25, we are getting a one at the output. So as you change the input voltage with the slider up to 1 1.75, 1.8, 1.9, two. So it is not changing the state 2.25. This is just showing one. So resolution is not good for two bit okay. It is more bit to have more better resolution. At 2.5, we are getting I think this is uh three. Okay. At two volt or two point five volt, we are getting three. Okay, so that's the flash converter, but because of only two bit, I think the resolution is not good. If you increase the number of bit, or if you increase the complexity of your design, you get better resolution. So that's the experimental procedure. Construct a two bit flash ADC, document the output values for different input values, and then draw the output of shapes for different input. Okay. Simulation and measurement. Compare the simulation results with your experimental data and comment on the differences penny. And this is a discussion. Interpret the data findings and uh, determine the extent to which the experiment was successful in complying with the goal that was initially set. Discuss any mistake you might have made while conducting the investigation and describe ways the study could have been improved. Okay. Questions for report writing. Draw the wave shape for binary output lines against analog input and sampling pulses. And that's the end of your demonstration. Now is the time for question and answer. So any question is the time to ask. I have uploaded this uh, PowerPoint slide with the original lab sheet in the post section. So everything will find over there that I have gone through the demonstration. Now is your time. You follow the lab sheet and perform the lab. 
Since this online class, do all the labs using multi sim light. So, but at this time, I'll give you a short break. I'll not give you the time of break. That means you can take the break as long as you need. But make sure when you are done with your break, come back and finish your lab. Once you finish your lab, give you a post on the uh, post section, okay, with a group number. Once you uh, post uh, your lab, work, lab activity, then you can leave the lab. So any question before you take the break? So let's start the break. And I am over here for any difficulty, just uh, knock me, tell me aloud. I will uh, try my best to solve the problem. Okay. I have given all the circuit on your on the PowerPoint slide for Market Sim Live, okay? So you can use the circuit that you have in your slide to implement in multi sim life. So let's start the break and good luck to all of you.